Hi, I'm Mike Dady, Senior Application Engineer at Go Engineer. I often hear SOLIDWORKS CAM standard referred to as a stripped down version of CAMWORKS, implying the product is somehow lacking in mill machining capability. Today we'll debunk these perceived limitations of SOLIDWORKS CAM by taking a dive into its three axis milling capabilities. Let's get started. The model we'll be working on has a pocket with two pentagons lofted to each other. The top pentagon is turned at an angle from the base providing us with a really nice surface for machining. We've also taken care of the stock, coordinate system, and mill part setup on the cam side of things. Our first step is setting up a multi-surface mill feature with an area clearance Z-level strategy. The select adjacent faces setting lets us pick the bottom face and radii, eliminating the need to zoom in for the small faces, which really accelerates the geometry collection for the feature. Once all the faces have been selected, everything is complete, and we can then generate the operations. To machine the pocket properly, a few modifications are needed for both operations. Because of the pocket depth, the tool needs to be modified to increase the protrusion and flute length. The other change is adjusting the advanced settings for the automatic contain area. The default setting is stock method, which would machine all the way out to the stock material boundaries. Changing it to outer silhouette will machine the XY boundaries of the geometry selected. The Z-level operation will require changes very close to the area clearance modifications. Once again, we'll adjust the automatic contain area to outer silhouettes, machining the proper area. Next, the tool will be changed to a hog nose and will increase the tool and holder dimensions like we did in the area clearance operation. Lastly, the end radius of the tool is reduced to match the fillet radius. With the operations updated, we can generate the toolpaths. Looking closely at the Z-level toolpath, we can clearly see it's a three-axis toolpath with only one entry and one exit for the operation. Now let's see what happens to the toolpath if we increase the bottom fillet size. As expected, SOLIDWORKS CAM lets us know the model has changed and the CAM data needs to be updated. Once the regeneration is complete, the toolpaths are updated to reflect the increased fillet radius. To verify the machining results for the next process, we can show the difference between the machine geometry and the finished model, allowing us to determine if sufficient material has been removed. Since we're discussing the next process, it is also possible to generate an STL of the work and process which can then be used as the stock material for the next operation. As you can see, SOLIDWORKS CAM standard is not some hobbyist program with limited capability. It can handle a large variety of milling needs and processes right out of the box, and we didn't even touch on the time-saving capabilities in the software. Pretty powerful features from a free add-in. Once again, I'm Mike Dady, Senior Application Engineer from Go Engineer. To discover more information on SOLIDWORKS CAM and other products, please visit the Go Engineer website.